The Lord be with you. I don't know who he is, but you always give credit where credit is due. But Pastor Robert E. Stetler tells the wonderful story, sort of wonderful, about a very wealthy woman who left the church but chose to remain on the rolls in order to receive the church newsletter. She had a falling out with the pastors some years before and vowed never to return. She became hospitalized and the minister became informed of this through another member of the congregation. Knowing that she would not be overjoyed to see him, the minister decided to send the newly hired seminary student. He told the seminarian none of this woman's history. The young man went. He entered the very dark private room. As he approached the bed, he accidentally dislodged the side railing and it came crashing down. As he was explaining who he was, he attempted to raise the side railing to its proper position, and in doing that, he knocked over the woman's water pitcher, and water spilled all over the top of the food tray stand and onto the floor. At this point, totally humiliated, the young man decided to say a prayer and leave. As he prayed, his anxiety level allowed none of her, his words to come out correctly. He was hemorrhaging emotionally. As he said, Amen. He left the room believing he was not destined to become a minister. When he got back to the church, a phone call came in for him. It was the patient he had just visited. She said, young man, you must come back. I apologize for not speaking. I was trying so hard not to burst out laughing at what you were trying to do with such sincerity that I was too embarrassed to speak. I have not laughed for years. I have been in a prison of my own creation, and you helped me to realize that. Have I ever told you this next story? I don't remember, so here goes. It was one of those times that can turn a pastor into a deer in headlights. I received a call at the church telling me that the husband of a beloved church member had been resurrected. Bible in hand, I immediately got in my car and went to her house. I knocked on the door. Another, another lady from the church opened the door, welcomed me in, and directed me to the grieving widow. I shook her hand. I hugged her. And then I froze. Words left me. Looking into her hurting eyes, I had no idea what to say or what to do. Some pastor I am. She invited me to sit next to her. I did. She took my hand in hers. Other church members came and went, and they all seemed to know exactly what to say. I never left her side. She never let go of my hand. I just sat there feeling so inadequate. After a few hours, she was worn out and went to nap and, truth be told, probably to hide from the world for a while. That was okay with me. I ran like I was escaping from prison. Oh, I was not thinking highly of myself. A couple of days later, in fact, I was back on her porch 
knocking on her door. I was there to apologize for being such a pitiful excuse for a pastor. She opened the door this time, and before I could say a word, she burst into tears, wrapped her arms around me, and said, Steve, I'm so glad you are here. I never got a chance to thank you. You got me through the hardest day of my life. If it wasn't for you, I don't know what I would have done. What? I hadn't done anything. That was the problem. How could she not see that I had failed her? Pastors call it the ministry of presence. It was a major lesson in my life, straight, straight from the heart of God, and I shall carry it in my heart always. What I learned that day is that God's strength is truly made perfect in our weakness. When we go out to serve God, we do not go alone. The Holy Spirit goes with us. The Holy Spirit truly was her pastor that day. He let her know that I grieved with her, even though I had no words to offer her. If someone asked me, if you could do it all over again, would you do it all over again? No way, not a chance. I have a treasure trove of experiences born of painful times, sinful times, and gloriously good times. As hard as it was to learn what God had for me in those experiences, I wouldn't trade them all on a do-over or anything else. Every one of those experiences taught me again and again that the Holy Spirit goes with me. And the Holy Spirit can even use someone like me to witness to the gospel and to share the good news. Thanks be to God. Always thanks be to God. Amen.